I'm Joan London. Welcome to Direct TV, Hometown Heroes. We travel all over America to communities large and small to find stories about Direct TV subscribers who perform extraordinary acts of kindness and courage every day. Tonight, you'll visit a Nebraska summer camp that's unlike any we've ever seen. I was diagnosed with full blown AIDS. Meet a remarkable woman in Alabama who has transformed hundreds of lives. I cannot even tell you how many hugs I give out a day. And hear the story of how a mother turned a personal tragedy into a mission to help others. Every farm should have a safety plan. This is DirecTV Hometown Heroes. People get ready, there's a train to come in. Picking up passengers from coast to coast. All you need is faith to hear that diesel humming. You don't need no ticket, you just get on board. Tonight we begin our show in eastern Nebraska, near Omaha. Many of us have treasured memories of time spent at summer camp, but for kids living with AIDS or HIV, it can be an emotionally challenging experience. Our correspondent Jennifer Santiago found a woman who is changing all of that. Welcome to Camp Kindle on the rural plains of Nebraska. Every year, kids gather here to enjoy the pleasures of summer camp. Swimming, dodgeball, arts and crafts. Thank you, buddy. But when I visited, I found out Camp Kindle is different from most other summer camps. Every kid here is either infected or affected by HIV or AIDS. So what makes this place so special? Well, first and foremost, um, you know, this is a camp where these kids can come and just truly be themselves. We've all been, like, discriminated or we've all felt, like, hated just because of HIV. This one-of-a-kind place is the brainchild of one truly exceptional young woman, Eva Payne. Good morning, Erin. Good morning, Holly. The name Kindle means to spark or to ignite interest, desires, or feelings. And so it's a perfect name for our organization. For at least one week every year, Eva provides a place where hundreds of children with very specific challenges learn they're not alone. I used to think that I was the only one in this whole big world that had it. But when I came here, I started to realize that there's like some awesome people that have it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank, thank you, you for saying thank you. Yes, After working with HIV positive kids, Eva told me she realized they needed a place where they could be themselves. So when she was just 21 years old, she decided to establish Camp Kindle. All right, have a seat, have a seat. 21 is so young. What made you think you could do this? Anyone at any age can make something happen. Run, 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 run. <laughs> It's that spirit and determination that drove Eva to find the thousands of dollars and the staff to make her dream a reality. Two, three. Yeah. We just thought, oh, let's just have this recreational camp. We'll go swimming, we'll do arts and crafts, we'll do all these kinds of things. And we didn't really even know what to expect. They soon learned that what these kids affected by HIV or AIDS needed most was a place to call their own. In third grade, uh, when I had to start taking medicine, um, I went to my friend's house and they made me drink out of different cups. I just want people to know that they can't get it by like sitting by me at lunch or sitting on the toilet. There is nothing that they cannot talk about here. Mm -hmm. And they know that they're gonna get 15 hugs mm -hmm. and people are gonna still be their friends and still wanna go swim with them in the same pool and still sit next to them at mealtime. And so they can truly be who they are. They don't have to hide. Ready? One hand down there, trace it. Eva and her staff also realized that along with arts and crafts and archery, Camp Kindle needed to offer classes in basic health education. They have the virus, but they don't even know what it is or what it means or even how to keep themselves healthy. Why don't you teach you how to do it? You show me. There you go. Everywhere in your body. You have these little holes called pores. These little pores all over your body let things in and out. If you have germs and dirt all over, it can get inside your body too. Camp Kendall also offers classes in relating to others. Okay, what did we talk about yesterday? Who can remember? We up on? Responsible. That was the theme of yesterday was responsibility, right? Today we're going to talk about a new word, and it also starts with an R. Respect. 
But the camp's most popular program, and the reason the kids keep coming back, is something called Speak Out. Have you ever spoken up when you've heard someone say something that wasn't true about HIV? It's a chance for our campers who are ready to go out into public schools, colleges, and educate people about what their life is like living with HIV or AIDS. All right, Brian. Speak Out veteran Brian Jackson is a perfect example. It hasn't been real easy for me growing up with AIDS. 17 year old Brian has AIDS and is hearing impaired. I was 11 months old and I was put in the hospital for asthma attacks. While being treated for asthma as a toddler, Brian was intentionally infected with the AIDS virus by his father, a medical technician. It was an attempt to end his son's life so he wouldn't have to pay child support. The five years passed on of just being very playful. But at age six, doctors discovered Brian was very ill. I was diagnosed with full-blown AIDS, given five months to live. It was a total of 22 oral medications, three IV antibiotics, two injections daily that helped me survive the deathbed. His father was later sent to prison, and Brian defied the predictions. Now, after six years in the Speak Out program, he tells his remarkable story to audiences large and small. There's only four ways you can get it, and I'm safe myself. If you be safe yourself, we're all going to stay cool, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> There's so much that Brian has to deal with, but like you're just always really happy and just really cheery, and it's like, wow. So I don't know, I just really look up to him for that. And he's not afraid to tell who he is, and I want to be just like that. After a week of sun, fun, and lots of support, every Camp Kindle session ends with tears and a tradition a wish ceremony. My wish is that everyone here will uh, live long, healthy lives. Have the strength to think about your past without it having to hurt so much. I wish that there was a cure for HIV and AIDS. Um, my wish is for people to love everybody for, for who they are, not for what they have. I did have a wish, but it came true. My wish was I find a place to belong. They're not wishing for a million dollars. They're wishing for a cure. They're wishing that their mom was still alive, you know? They're wishing that, um, that they could come to camp for another week. What about your wish? My wish is that the stigma would not exist anymore so that these kids could just be themselves. Until that day, Eva remains a hero to her hundreds of campers living with HIV and AIDS, all for turning what was once a far-fetched idea into their beloved Camp Kindle. Eva is definitely like one of my heroes because every time I look at her, I just like see all of her passion and all her love and dedication. Because like Camp Kindle is not just like a one-week thing; it's like her whole life. Like every time I see Eva, I just like really thank for what she has done. She's kind of like my second mom. Hug. Glad you had a good week. All the kids call you a hero. Do you consider yourself one? Oh, gosh. No, I mean, not at all. I mean, I just came up with the idea. And it's our campers who are the real heroes. They're my inspiration. They are the true heroes. Eva told us that she is now hosting free camps in Nebraska and California every summer, as well as year-round support programs for youngsters affected by HIV and AIDS. We are proud to call Eva Payne a Direct TV hometown hero. Coming up next, find out who steps in to help when women in Alabama hit rock bottom and have no place to turn. We feed them, we house them, we give them an education. And later, we travel to America's heartland to meet a mother who has dedicated her life to making children safer. We can stop a lot of these accidents from happening. For more information on these and all of our stories, go to directtv.com slash heroes. You're watching Direct TV Hometown Heroes. I'm Joan London. Our next hero was nominated by one of you, a viewer. She's a remarkable Alabama woman who insists that she's no saint, but she is very special nonetheless. 
Birmingham, Alabama. One of the jewels of the South. It's a place where you'll find one of the most compelling women we've ever met. The day you walked in here is the first day of your new life. Her name is Brenda Spahn, and she operates the Love Lady Center right here in Birmingham. It's a nonprofit rehabilitation facility for women who've had trouble with the law. If everything is all that great in your life, then you wouldn't be here in the first place. Our goal is to help women who have previously had trouble in their life become the very best that they can possibly be. It's an approach that combines tough love. You can blame it on the judges, you can blame it on the court system, you can blame it on anything, but there are people who go all their life without getting caught up in what you got caught up in. With unending support and encouragement. These women are afraid to have hope because they think hope is for other people. They're afraid to even dream because dreams belong to other people, not to them. So what you have to do is you have to show people that they can dream and hope and love again and it's not gonna hurt him this time. Six years ago, after a career as a motivational speaker and real estate developer, Brenda says God called her to minister to women in prison. The first time I ever went into an institution, I knew I was home. I knew that this was my destiny to work with these women. She started by inviting five hardened female ex-cons just out of jail to move into her palatial home. I stood at the window and I watched him get out. Shay Curry was one of the original five. And I'm looking at the mansion, I said, man, they done tricked me again, I'm gonna go be a maid. <laughs> and I don't think I've ever been more scared in my life. I just wanted to run. I'm thinking, what have I done? Before long, five women turned into 40, and the neighbors were up in arms. But Brenda had found her calling, so she took a leap of faith and bought this former hospital on Birmingham's northeast side, turning it into her new home base. And I said, Mother, this is borderline insanity. She said, I know, isn't it wonderful? I said, no. She, she said, you know how many lives God can change in a place like this? Good morning. Good morning. With that, this massive 280,000 square foot facility became the Love Lady Center. It's a place where women who've been recently released from prison, referred by the courts, or simply want a helping hand, get everything they could possibly need to be able to re-enter society. We feed them, we house them, we give them an education, we find them jobs, we meet all their physical needs, emotional needs, spiritual needs, we have counseling for them. How many of you been here less than a week? Every week, 15 women, sometimes with their children in tow, arrive at the center for a stay of six months to a year. Rachel Foster was sent here by her probation officer after failing a drug test. I was scared to death. Um, I was like, these people are crazy. Rachel. I didn't think that this would be anything that could help me. And now I've got somebody to help me and show me how, you know, to be a normal person again. Let's make the beds. Rachel's nearly ready to move out, but she still recalls her arrival here at the center. I remember Miss Brenda walking up to me and saying, who are you? And I said, Rachel Foster. And she said, well, give me a hug. I love you. Hey, baby. I give out about 100 hugs a day. Brenda says hugs are sometimes what the 330 women living here at the center really need. They are just really wanting a mom, someone to hug them. I've actually had grown women come sit in my lap and say, will you just hold me? But not everything here is hugs and kisses. You were a drug kid. Many of the women who come here to the center are addicted to drugs. So step one is detox. We random drug test all the time. We'll get them up in the middle of the night. We'll go search rooms. We do all kinds of things. And I even once in a while bring in the drug dogs. Once the women are sober, the real work begins. Let's have a seat right there. First, they attend mandatory classes. Then they're assigned a job at the center. Morning. Morning. How you doing? That could be anything from kitchen duties to cleaning crew. Can we get a desk thing? Or they pitch in designing and sewing tote bags, which, along with donations, help financially sustain the center. Oh, they're cute. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you today, and Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for this center. We thank you for every woman, every child in here. They're also expected to participate in counseling and Bible study sessions. Lord, we're asking you to bless us today. Brenda says that faith is essential to the Love Lady mission. Just hang on, have faith. It sounds so cliche, but that's exactly what it is. That's what faith is, believing in things you cannot see. And they see no future, they see no hope, and all of a sudden, they see it. Hey, man. Good morning, Miss Brenda. Hey, man, I know she's still lighting up. According to Rachel, that faith has helped prepare her for a new life on the outside with her son, Garrett. Whose picture is this for? For me. Oh. And I finally realized that hole that I was looking to fill with drugs and alcohol and men only needed to be filled by God and that this center had people that actually loved me and cared about me. Brenda's goal for every woman who enters Love Lady is to eventually see her leave and rejoin her family. Cindy Haney is living proof. When I first went to the Love Lady Center, I was on very shaky grounds with my family. Cindy had been in and out of jail five times and had a $1,000 a day crack cocaine addiction. Then, a judge sent her to the Love Lady Center. If it wasn't for the Love Lady Center, and I would probably be back out there on the streets wondering where you're gonna lay your head at night. Instead, thanks to Brenda, Cindy's been reunited with her family and has stayed stable and drug-free. Now I have all my kids and doing great. And I talk to my family every day. I'm in the process of buying my second house and my first house I'm turning into a graduate house for the Love Lady Center. Not everyone graduates from Love Lady like Cindy, but for those who do, Brenda says they're likely to have stable and fulfilling lives. If a woman finishes our program, there is a 90% chance that she will make it out in society. With a track record like that, it's no wonder that hundreds of women say they literally owe their lives to Brenda Spahn. I thank God every day for Miss Brenda, and if it wasn't for the Love Lady Center, there's no telling where I would be today. You're not gonna fall this time. You're gonna stay right here. She doesn't think about herself. She's selfless. She's caring. She loves her children, and that's 300 children. Hundreds of women will tell you that she's a hero. Hundreds of children who have their mother back I will tell you that she's a hero. And hundreds of parents who have their children back because of what she was willing to do. You gotta do what's best, because you don't wanna go back. I am not a saint. And uh, you know, if you could read my thoughts all the time, you would know I'm not. Uh, trust me, I think just like everybody else. Hey, darling. I'm just here, I'm just doing what I'm called to do. I love you, baby. I love you bunches. <laughs> Last year, the Love Lady Center provided 153,000 nights of shelter and served almost a half a million cooked meals without receiving any government funding. And that's why we've named Brenda Spawn a Direct TV hometown hero. Coming up next, see how just a few seconds changed the course of one woman's life. Losing a child is absolutely the toughest thing in the world. To nominate a hero, go to our website at directtv.com slash heroes. Tonight's next story comes from America's heartland, where the family farm remains an important part of the fabric of our country. It was on one such farm that correspondent Grant Goodeve met a woman who turned a tragic loss into a reason for living. Earlham, Iowa, an endless sea of cornfields, rolling hills, and gorgeous sunsets, and home to dozens of family farms. But hidden amidst the beauty of this farmland are hazards that often turn deadly. Even when you live on a farm, sometimes you don't realize all of the dangers. Every farm should have a safety plan, and you should have rules. Marilyn Adams not only knows the dangers of farm life firsthand, She's committed to protecting the most vulnerable farmers out there. And what he was doing. Uh, the children. Learned, our mission statement is to promote a safe rural environment. Marilyn is the founder and president of Farm Safety for Just Kids. 
It's a nonprofit organization devoted to teaching farm safety to rural families around the country. Preteen boys are at extremely high risk. Well, I've learned the hard way that, that a child is not a small adult. Marilyn's crusade has its origins in a personal tragedy. In 1988, her 11-year-old son, Keith, stayed home from school one day to help his dad harvest the year's first crop of corn. They were using a piece of equipment called a gravity flow wagon. I'm not sure why he got in the wagon, you know, but he, he got up in the corn for some reason and it, and it pulled him under. It's, it's like quicksand. Within seconds, Keith was suffocated under two tons of corn. Losing a child is absolutely the toughest thing in the world. That's the biggest void I have ever had to deal with. And emotionally, I was shocked. In the aftermath, Marilyn eventually found a way to make sense of her family's devastating loss, thanks to her daughter, Kelly. My oldest daughter came to me one day and she said, Mom, I need your help. She asked if I would do some research about gravity flow wagons. She said that she wanted to do a speech about Keith. That is really what brought me back to life and helped me rejoin my family and to get emotionally involved in something positive. 1001, 1002. Inspired by her daughter, Marilyn began sharing her family's story. OK, it took about seven seconds. That's about how long it takes to get pulled under in a real wagon. She made it her mission to warn the next generation of America's farmers about the hidden dangers of their way of life. One of the things that we would encourage you to do is have a rule on your farm that you do not allow extra riders on a tractor, on a combine, on a four-wheeler. Guess we might as well get this staff meeting going. Marilyn single-handedly created the first comprehensive set of guidelines to help keep farm kids out of harm's way. There were no materials out there for children's farm safety. We developed the first, and we're still developing educational materials. After Marilyn created Farm Safety for Just Kids, it literally became her lifeline. It gave me a lot of purpose and meaning, and it was a, a way to help, help others. <laughs> Over the years, Marilyn has built a network of 3,000 volunteers who help spread the message, a network that includes people like 16-year-old Christy Ruth of Sheraton, Iowa. And I'm here today to talk to you guys about farm safety. Two years ago, Christy was seriously injured in an accident on the farm. We started drilling a hole right here, and the ground was frozen. Christy was using a tractor to power a large drill. And it was bucking around, and it was kicking. And I was right here holding the top and the bottom to keep it from shaking. Christy got too close to a long metal shaft that was spinning at high speed. And my glove got caught on a bolt, and my arm got wrapped around completely up, and it stretched out. And it, every time it wrapped, it broke. So it wrapped here, and here, and here, and here. Christy's doctor somehow managed to save her arm. And afterward, getting involved with Farm Safety for Just Kids gave her life new meaning. All of that, just because I wasn't being careful, it's one of those things where you think it can't happen to me when all of the time it can. I possibly could help somebody else from being killed. Christy makes them understand, and they feel her pain. She'll save some lives. Marilyn still gets out there, too. All year long, she attends events throughout the Midwest, like this county fair, to raise public awareness. Hi. Hello. I'm Marilyn Adams. Yep. Jeff Potter. Nice to meet you, Jeff. Yep, good to meet you. Now, I understand you lost a son, too. Yeah, I did, uh, 95, 13. Wow. So. Over the last eight years, Maryland's public awareness campaign has reached an astonishing 12 million people. The thing about Marilyn that just amazes me is that she doesn't think of herself. She thinks about how she can help other people, and she thinks about how she can make other kids safe, and I think that's amazing in a person. It's hard getting up and telling people your story. It keeps her going, I suppose. And that's a good thing. You know, you got to keep going. Have a good evening. Good night. For Marilyn, her story serves as a reminder that even a personal tragedy can be transformed into an inspiring cause for the greater good. Now that I've been successful with the biggest 
lemon in the world, turning it into lemonade, then, you know, I, I just feel like the sky's the limit. We can, we can change traditions, and we can stop a lot of these accidents from happening. It's a whole lot easier to uh, bury a tradition than it is to bury a child. Farm Safety for Just Kids is happy to provide all the resources and assistance needed to help you conduct farm safety activities in your community. For her work to keep rural children safe and healthy, we are pleased to name Marilyn Adams a Direct TV hometown hero. Finally, tonight's hero update. Last season, correspondent Mark Istook brought us a story of Carolyn Blaschek, the founder of Operation Gratitude. She's a Southern California woman who sent hundreds of thousands of care packages to American soldiers serving overseas. She's done a lot more since then, but first, let's take a look at this. Twice a year, hundreds of volunteers descend on the armory for eight days of controlled chaos. Their goal, to assemble 60,000 care packages. The first thing that happens is they put the Operation Gratitude label on it, and then they get taped up into the shape of a box. Next, one set of volunteers moves the boxes down the line, while another set of volunteers works feverishly to fill them. Down here, we're getting Girl Scout cookies, CDs, DVDs, shaving gel, a lot of coffee. They need that. The boxes get addressed and triple sealed. Then they're ready for the post office. How long will you carry out Operation Gratitude? As long as we have troops deployed anywhere in the world, we'll keep sending care packages. Last year, Carolyn went to Iraq herself for the first time to personally deliver the 300,000th care package to a soldier stationed there. And this past Christmas, package number 400,000 was sent on its way. The inspirational stories that you've just seen show how DirecTV subscribers are changing lives in their communities. Whether it's helping troubled women rebuild their lives or working to keep children safe, these unsung heroes show us how we can all make a difference. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on DirecTV Hometown Heroes. Until then, I'm Joan London. People get ready, there's a train to come in. Picking up passengers from coast to coast. All you need is faith to hear that diesel humming. You don't need no ticket, you just get on board.